Hey guys, great to have you here again today. We're gonna to talk about a great drill from a coach called Pete Cowan. Now Pete's kind of the main guy over in Europe, coaches Hendrick Stenson, tons of guys. If you look up his name, you'll see a laundry list of the top PGA Tour players that are from overseas that he's worked with. Um, Hendrick Stenson being one of the, the top guys. And we're gonna talk about his spiral staircase drill. And I think this is a great drill to help you get good rotation, <clears throat> making a really good turn, starting from the ground up into the backswing and then coming all the way on through just like we talk about in the power turn in our top speed golf system. So the key is we're gonna start from the ground and then work up our body. And then on the downswing, we're still gonna start from the ground, work up our body going in the opposite direction. Now, a lot of players, if you tend to start casting, start coming over the top, hitting a big slice, maybe I'm very upper body dominant and I'm kind of coming over the top, casting, losing some lag, this is gonna be a great drill for you. Also, if you feel like you're rushed in the golf swing, this is gonna help smooth everything out, give you plenty of time to load up on the way back and unload on the way through. So it's called the spiral staircase drill. Now, one thing I will say before we get started here, I have other videos where I talk about the science of exactly how you're gonna be pushing into the ground, how that rotates your body and, and ground or force reaction, those kind of things are a little bit more complicated. That's not what this drill is about at all. This is a simple drill that you can go out, get a good visualization in your mind for what you wanna practice, you can take it out to the driving range and start hitting balls and just it's more of a feeling and a good good rhythm to it rather than the hard science of what's going on. So when we start out here, let's let's talk about this spiral staircase and everything happens from the ground working up from there. So we're going to start from our ankle ankles and you can imagine that the energy starts out from my left ankle going back and it works up in just a little bit higher kind of wrapping around my body. So I'm going from left ankle to my right shin. So left ankle, right shin. Then I'm going from left shin to right knee, left knee to right thigh. So it's actually working up as it's coming into the backswing. So I'm just gonna do some little mini kind of working the club back and through. So I'm left ankle to right shin, left shin to right knee, left knee to right hip, left hip to, to right oblique, left oblique to right shoulder left shoulder to above right shoulder. So everything is kind of working up and in. So since it's at an angle here too, this is a good visual for us staying in posture. Since we're kind of working up and around in this kind of a plane, as we're doing these rotations, now I'm staying in my posture. I don't want to be working just flat with the ground and rotating this way back and through. I got to stay in my posture bent forward as I'm doing these rotations. So just do these little pump drills. Think about working up your body, starting from the feet, working all the way up to the top of the shoulders, and then we're gonna reverse it into the downswing. So I'm gonna start above my, or with my right ankle. We're gonna work from the ground up again. So if you tend to be upper body dominant and you're starting to throw the club from the top and you just can't get out of that, this is really gonna help you to get in that correct mindset. So on the way down, we're going right ankle to left shin, right shin to left knee, right knee to left thigh. So the start of the downswing it's happening with the legs and the lower body. We're getting rid of that, that urge to go with the, the upper body. So let's go to the top again, and we're gonna work from right ankle to left shin, right shin to, to left knee, right knee to left thigh, and then we're gonna go from right thigh to left hip. Now at this point, as I'm working down from the top, you'll see my club's getting lower and lower. I'm in a good position to where I could hit the golf ball from here. And then that's gonna allow me, for when I get to there, I'm about halfway down as I'm working through the hips. Well, now it's time to start to use the upper body. As I work from my, my right hip to my left oblique and my right oblique to my left shoulder, now I'm starting to get into the part of the downswing where I can fire my upper body. I can go ahead and let those arms and, and shoulders and everything come on through. But we're imagining from the ground up, working up the staircase on the way back, then we're gonna reverse it, work from your right foot up the staircase on the way through. So do a good 10 reps of this. If you're in your living room, if you're in your office right now and you want a couple minute break from work, we can just do these little mini pump drills with the club and just imagine going from the bottom of your body all the way up to the top. Then we're gonna go from the right foot to the left side, all the way back down. And then we're gonna come all the way on through. When I come through, make sure that right ankle or that right foot comes completely off the ground, just the toes touching. My hips are toward the target and I've got a really good finish as I come on through there. So once we've done that a few times, it's just a great visual to help you work from the ground up. And then when we get out to the driving range, I'm gonna do a few just to get that same feeling from the ground up on the way back and then from the ground up 
on the way through. Then we're gonna finish that swing, get that same visual in your mind, and then we'll go out and hit some golf balls. There we go, guys. Work from the ground up. You'll pick up some speed, you'll pick up some rotation. You'll start hitting that ball farther and a lot smoother. All right, guys, hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. We all want lots of lag in our golf swing. It's so crucial to have tons of lag to be able to get that high club head speed and to be able to drive it past your friends. I'm gonna play a preview from one of my most important golf lag videos. If you're on a desktop device, you can go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen. If you're on a phone or a tablet, you go ahead and click the i card and you're gonna get instant access to that video. Plus, you're gonna get instant access to five videos from our top speed golf system. Good luck to you guys. Go out there and rip the ball. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. 